So we can't make a video on this. Otis, we already had this discussion. The, the B-21 is being developed in a very particular way and it is groundbreaking. Sir, we still don't know anything about the aircraft. No information has been released. Otis, when there will be numbers and pictures available, everybody will be doing videos and articles and blog posts saying how powerful it is and nobody will remember Devstar or why the software is so particular. With all the due respect, sir. Those subjects are boring for humans. Otis, our viewers are different. So here's the thing, the B-21 radar is expected to fly for the first time in 2022. It has been confirmed that there are five aircraft at different level of completion. There are going to be either prototypes or development aircraft. However, Otis is right, we know very little about the aircraft. We know it is a stealth flying wing like the B-2, but unlike the B-2, it won't be only a bomber. Uh, the platform will also be capable of electronic intelligence gathering and it will also operate as a flying common post. We know it will deliver nuclear weapons but also conventional weapons and it is fair to say that it is going to be integrated with the usual zoo of American intelligent weapons. We also know that this particular design it has been chosen because it is more effective against low frequency radar than the conventional stealth design. So the stealth should be pretty good. And we also know that it is expected to replace the B1 and the B2 while the B52 is basically mortal. And we also know that the United States Air Force want to acquire about a hundred units but probably it will acquire a few more. We don't know the propulsion unit it should be a Pratt and Whitney but yes we just don't know and we also know that the projected cost will be five hundred and fifty dollars a piece millions sir what five hundred and fifty million dollars a piece sir yes right and we don't know exactly what's included in that price which by the way dates back to 2010 so so we don't know much yet, but we know that the B-21 program is addressing effectively one of the worst problems that plagued the most recent aircraft programs, and particularly the most sophisticated ones. DevStar is a software development methodology which is basically aimed at not repeating the experience of the F-35. Aircraft software development is normally painfully slow. Well, it is very complex in itself, but it is also one-off development from scratch and testing is absolutely essential. The long timelines required to develop an aircraft and the fact there are many parallel strands of development make everything more complex. Well, at least till today, the Air Force has developed a new software development methodology called DevStar, which is a derivative of the agile methodology which today is commonly used in the business world for software development but also project management in general. For those who are not familiar the agile methodology is an incremental development methodology. It works in iterations and each iteration is focused on delivering a small chunk of new features. This is done iteratively over and over again and the software keeps improving at a steady pace. DevStar is basically agile on steroids. Not only the software is developed in small incremental chunks, feature by feature, function by function, but also it is immediately tested by all the stakeholders. Representatives of the pilot community, the maintainer community, the planner community, uh, all the other contractors, the weapons manufacturers, they are all involved since the beginning. They all test every individual release straight away. In this way, the software matures much more quickly because the feedback of all these categories is actually included in the next release. We don't know what they are exactly doing at Northrop, but a single iteration may last two weeks, three weeks, a month tops, 
and release after release the software is improved including the feedback of all these stakeholders without waiting the end of the development when for example the maintainers are brought in to test their part but there's more so the software periodically undergoes a sort of a general test running on the real hardware under the input of a simulated aircraft obviously the hardware is not mounted on the aircraft yet and the input is just a simulation but you know which is the range of inputs that you can have from the sensors so you can do a pretty realistic simulation when the b21 will be ready for the first flight the software will have flown that mission already hundreds of times obviously not everything is hunky-dory the flip side of this methodology and agile methodologies in general is that a lot of people are actually involved all the time in the software development Time can be saved and quality could be better, but the manpower required is higher than the conventional methodologies. And actually testing costs should be quite high, I suppose. There's always a trade-off in life. However, this approach won't stop when the aircraft is finally delivered. The B-21 will not have the usual block releases. It will be continuously improved. There will be a stream of small releases to address whatever problem is found or whatever improvement is deemed necessary. Uh, obviously, we are talking software here because the hardware, for obvious reasons, is more complex. Another notable fact about the B21 software, and in this case also hardware, is that the, the Department of Defense MOS Open Architecture concept has been used. We have already encountered the Open Architecture, speaking of the F-18, and for a non-American example, uh, the Saab Gripen. So if you want to learn more about the Open Architecture, please watch the videos that are going to appear beside me. In the meanwhile, thank you very much for watching and see you there.